everyone, my name is Savannah Peterson, coming to you live from the KubeCon show floor on the Cube here in Detroit, Michigan. The energy is pulsing. Big event for the Cloud Native Foundation, and I'm joined by John Furrier on my left. John, hello. Great to, great to, great to have you on the Cube. Thanks for being our new host. You look great. Great segment coming up. I'm looking forward to this, Savannah. This is a great segment. A Cube alumni, an OG in the Cloud Native world, or Clouderati, as I call it. Been there, done that, a lot of respect, a lot of doing some really amazing, I call it the super cloud, holy grail, but we'll see. <laughs> Your I mean, favorite we'll, word, we'll, we'll, this, we'll, this favorite word. trip. It's a really strong segment, looking forward to hearing from this guest. Yes, I am very excited, and I'm going to let him tee it up a little bit, but our guest and his project were actually mentioned in the opening keynote this morning, which is very, very exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bassam Tabara. Bassam, thanks for being here with Thank us. Thank you guys, so good to be back here on the show, and, uh, and this exciting energy around us, so super, super awesome to be here. Yeah, it feels great. So let's start with the opening keynote. Did you know you were going to get that shout out? No, not at all. Uh, it was it was really cool to see. Uh, you know, I think Cruise was up there talking about how yeah. they're uh, building their own platform for autonomous cars and what's running behind it. And they mentioned all these projects, and uh, you know, we were like, "Wow, that sounds super familiar." And then, <laughs> then and then they said, "Okay, yeah, we were you know cross plane. They mentioned cross plane. They mentioned upbound. They mentioned the work that we're doing in this space to help folks effectively run." You know their own layer on top of cloud computing, and then so we've known each other. We're going to do a bingo super cloud. So how many times is super cloud? So super cloud is super <laughs> services, super apps around it. So it enables a lot of great things. Like Brian Grace had a great podcast this week on super services. So that's super super exciting. It's a super great time on the cube. Super pump. Let's do this <laughs> super cloud conversation. <laughs> All seriously, now we've known each other for a long time. You've been to every KubeCon. You've been in open source, you've seen, the, seen where it's been, where it is now. Super exciting that in mainstream conversations, we're talking about super cloud and abstractions and around yeah. interoperability. Things that were once like really hard to do, back, even back in the OpenStack days, now we're at a prime time spot where the control plane, the data planes, are in play as a viable architectural component of all the biggest conversations. Yeah. You're in the middle of it. What's your take on it? Give some perspective of why this is so important. I mean, look, uh, the key here is to standardize, right? Get to standardization, right? And, and what we saw, like early days of cloud native, it was mostly around Kubernetes, but it was Kubernetes as a, you know, essentially a container orchestrator. The container wars, Docker, Mesos, yeah. et cetera, and then Kubernetes emerged as a, a, the winner in containers, right? But containers is a workload, one kind of workload. It's, I run containers on it. Not everything's containers, right? And the, you know, what we're seeing now is the Kubernetes API is emerging as a way to standardize on literally everything in cloud, not just containers, but you know, VMs, serverless, Lambda, et cetera, storage, databases, it, all using a common approach, a common API layer, a common way to do access control, a common way to do policy, all built around open source projects and you know, the cloud native ecosystem that you're seeing around here. And that, that's exciting, because we, for the first time, we're arriving at some kind of standardization. Yeah. Every major inflection point has this de facto standard evolution, then it becomes kind of commonplace. Great, I agree with Kubernetes. The question I wanted to ask you is, what's the impact to the DevOps community? DevSecOps has absolutely dominated the playbook, if you will. Developers, we're saying, will run companies because they'll be running the applications. IT's not a department anymore. Yeah. It is the business. Um, if you believe the digital transformation finds its final conclusion, which it will at some point. So more developers doing more apps, more stuff. Look, if you, I'd be hard pressed to find somebody that has a title of DevOps or SRE that can't at least spell Kubernetes, if not running <laughs> in production, right? And so, from that perspective, I think this is a welcome change. Standardize on something that's already familiar to everyone. It's actually really powerful. They don't have to go, okay, we learned Kubernetes, now you guys are taking us down a different path of standardization or something else has emerged. It's the same thing. It's like we have, what, eight years now of yeah. cloud native, roughly, and, and people in the DevOps space welcome a change where they are basically standardizing on things that are working, right? They're actually working, right? And they could be used in more, use cases in more scenarios than they're actually, you know, become versatile, they become, you know, uh, ubiquitous, if take, you will. Take a minute to just 
explain what you guys are selling and doing, what's the product, what's the traction, why are people using you, what's the big, big position uh, value statement you guys have? Yeah, so, so, so the, my company's called Upbound and we're the, we're the folks behind the, the Crossplane project. And Crossplane is effective, takes Kubernetes and extends it to beyond containers and to ev managing everything in cloud. Right, so if you think about that, if you love the model where you're like, I, I go to a Kubernetes cluster and I tell it to run a bunch of containers and it does it for me and I walk away, you can do that for the rest of the surface area of cloud, including your VMs and your storage and across cloud vendors, hybrid models, all of it works in a consistent standardized way, you know, using cross-plane, right? And what, what upbound you, is what the do you What do you solve in a, or eliminate? What happens, why does this work? Are you yeah. replacing something? Are you abstracting away something? Are you changing something? What's I think we're layering on top of things that people have, right? So, so you, you'll see people are organized differently. We see a common pattern now where there are shared services teams or platform teams as you hear within enterprises that are responsible for basically managing infrastructure and offering a self-service experience to developers, right? Those teams are all about standardization. They're all about creating things that help them reduce the toil, manage things in a common way, and then offer self-service abstractions to their uh, you know, developers and customers so they don't have to be in the middle of every request. Things can go faster. We're seeing a pattern now where the, these teams are standardizing on the Kubernetes API, or standardizing on Crossplane, and standardizing on things that make their life easier, right? Um, they don't have to replace what they're doing, they just have to layer and use it, and I layer is probably a, an opening for you. <laughs> that, that makes so it I'm, sound I'm, I'm more to... <laughs> complex, I think, than what you're actually trying to do. I mean, you as a company are all about velocity as an ethos, which I think is great. Do you think that standardization is the key in increasing velocity for teams leveraging both cross-plane, Kubernetes, anyone here? Look, I mean, everybody's trying to get, achieve the same thing. Everybody wants to go faster, they want to innovate faster, they don't want tech to be the friction to innovation, right? right? They, want, they want to go from feature to production in minutes, right? And so, or less. to that extent, standardization is a way to achieve that. It's not the only way to achieve that. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's means to achieve that. And if you've standardized, that means that less people are involved, you can automate more, you can, sta you can centralize, and by doing that, that means you can innovate faster. And if you don't innovate these days, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're out of business. Do you think that, so Kubernetes has a bit of a reputation for complexity. Correct. You're obviously creating a tool that makes things easier. As you apply Kubernetes outside just an orchestration and container environment, do you, what do you see those advantages being across the spectrum of tools that people are leveraging you for? Yeah, I mean, look, if Kubernetes is a platform, right, to build other things on top of, and as a, as a result, it's something that's used to kind of on the back end, like you would never, you should put something in front of Kubernetes as an application model or consumption interface or portals or, right, to give yeah. to your teams, but you should still capture all your policies, and, you know, automation and compliance, governance at the Kubernetes layer, right, at the, or with Crossplane at that layer as well, right, and right. so if you follow that model, you can get the best of world, both worlds, you standardize, Mm -hmm. You centralize, you are able to have you know, common controls and policies and everything else, but you can expose something that's a dev-friendly experience on top of it as well. So you get the, both, both, the best of both worlds. So the problem with infrastructure as code, you're saying is, is that it's not this new layer to go cross environments. Is that? No, infrastructure as code uh, works slightly differently. I mean, you, you, can, add, you can write you know, uh, infrastructure as code using whatever tooling you like to go across environments. The problem with it is that everybody has to learn a specific language or has to work with understanding the constructs. There's the beauty of the Kubernetes-based approach and the cross-plane-based approach is that it puts APIs first, right? It's basically saying, look, yeah kind of like the API mandate that led to AWS being created, <laughs> right? Um, teams should interact with yeah. APIs. They're super strong contracts, right? They're versionable. Yeah. And if you, if you do that, and that's kind of the power of this approach, then you can actually reach a really high level of automation and a really high level of innovation. And this also, just not to bring in the clouds here, but this might bring up the idea that 
common services create interoperability, but yet the hyperscale clouds can still differentiate on value. Very much. Faster processors, if it's silicon, to better yeah. functions, if Lambda, right? I mean, so there's still, it's not killing innovation. It is not, and in fact, I, you know, this idea of building something that looks like a lowest common denominator across clouds, we don't actually see that in practice, right? People, wa people want to use the best services available to them because they don't have time to go you know, build portability layers and everything else, but they still, even in that model, yeah. want to standardize on how to call these services, yeah. how to set policy on them, how to set access control, how to actually invoke them. If you can standardize on that, you can still, you get, the, you yeah. get to use these services, and you get the benefits of standardization. Well, so, Savannah, we were talking about this, about the Berkeley paper that came out in May, which is kind of a super cloud version, they call Sky Computing. Their argument is that if you try to standardize too much, like the old kind of OSI model back in the day, you're actually going to uh, thwart innovation, it's going to stunt the growth. Do you agree with that? How do you see, because standardization is not so much a spec and uh, IT, IT, ITEF thing, it's not an IEEE committee. Yeah. It's not a, like that kind of standard, it's more of de facto. I mean look, we've had standards emerge, like you know, if you look at MySQL for example and the Postgres movement, like there are now lots of vendors that offer interfaces that support Postgres even though they're differentiated completely on how it's implemented. So you see that. If you can, stick to open interfaces and use services that, that offer them. Like tons of differentiation, yet still, you know, some kind of open interface, if you will. Um, but there are also differentiated services yeah. that are don't have open interfaces, and that's okay too, as long as yeah. you're able to kind of find a way to manage them yeah. in a consistent way. I think you should, and it makes sense to your business, you should use them. So enterprises like this, and just not to get into the business model side real quick, but like, how are you guys making money? You got the project, <laughs> you got the cross-plane project, that's community. You guys charging, what's, what's the business model? We, we're in the business of helping people adopt and run control planes uh, that do all this management service, for them. Managed service, managed service, and customer support and services. Yeah. The, the plethora of things <laughs> that people need. Yeah. We're, while we're keeping the project While keeping pumping. the project, correct. So that's the key. That's correct, right. yeah. Right. You have to balance both. And you're all over the show. I mean, outside of the keynote mention, looking here, you have four events on. Where can people find you if they're tuning in? We're just at the beginning, and there's a lot of looks here. Upbound.io is the place to find uh, Upbound. And um, we have a lot of talks. You'll see Crossplane mentioned in lots of talks and in a number of talks today. Uh, we have a happy hour later today. We've got a booth set up, so. Uh, I'll be there, folks, just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone will be there now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> quick update, what's, up, what's new with the Crossplane project? Can you share a little commercial what the most important stories going on there? So Crossplane is growing, obviously, and uh, we're seeing a ton of adoption of Crossplane, especially actually in large enterprise, um, which is really exciting, because they're usually the slow to move, <laughs> and Crossplane is so central. Yeah. Um, so it's now in hundreds and thousands of deployments, uh, in, which is amazing to see. Um, and so the, the project itself is adding a ton of features, reducing friction in terms of adoption, how people ride these control yeah. plans and author them coverage of the space. As you know, controls are only useful when you connect them to things. And the yeah. space is, like the amount of things you can connect control planes to is increasing on a day-to-day -day basis, and the maturity is increasing. So it's just super exciting to see all of this right now. How would you categorize the landscape? We were just talking earlier in another segment. We're in Detroit, Motor City. You know, it's like teaching someone how to drive a car. Kubernetes clusters, okay, switch the gears. Like, you know, don't hit the other guy. You know, now once they learn how to drive, they want a sports car. How do you keep them, that progression going? How do you keep people to grow continuously? Where do you see the DevOps and or folks that are doing cross-playing that are API hardcore? Because that's a good IQ that shows them that they're advancing. Where's the IQ level of advancement relative to the industry? Is the adoption just like, you know, getting going? Are people advancing? Yeah. Sounds like your customers are heavily down the road on. Yeah, the way I describe it is there's a progression happening, right? It, it, DevOps was make, Initially, it was like, how do I keep things running, right? And the transition to, how do I automate things so that I don't have to be involved when things are running, right? Now we're seeing a next turn, which is, how do I build what looks like a product that offers shared services or a platform 
so that people consume it like a product, right? Yeah. And now I'm now transition becomes well. I'm an I'm a developer on a product in operations, building something that looks like a product <laughs> and thinking about it as a as a has a user interface. Ops are the new devs. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Talk about layers. Talk about layers on layers. That's not on confusing layers. at all, John. Well, you know when they have the architect architectureless product uh, that's coming. No, but this is what's, I mean, the devs have got so much DevOps in the front in the CICD pipeline, the ops teams are now retrofitting themselves to be data and security mainly, yep. and that's just guardrails, automation, yep. policy. policy. You're yep. seeing a lot of that kind of network-like exactly. function. Yep. And they're, they're, co they're composing, not maybe coding a little bit, but they're not, they're not coding. Very much, they're, they're in the composition, uh, you know, that, as a daily thing. They're, they're writing compositions, they're building things, they're putting them together and making them work. How new is this in your mind? Because you, you're watching this progress, you're in the middle of it, you're in the front wave of this. Is it adopting faster now than ever before? I mean, if we talked, if five years ago we were kind of saying this might happen, but it wasn't happening. Today it, it, it is. It's kind, of it's kind of amazing. I like, um, like everybody's writing these cloud services now. Everybody's authoring things that look like API services that do things on top of new structure. That move is yeah. very much has a ton of momentum right now and it's happening mainstream. It, it's becoming mainstream. Speaking of momentum, Bassam, I saw both on your LinkedIn as well as on your badge today that you are hiring. This is your opportunity to shamelessly plug. What are you looking for? What can people expect <laughs> in terms of your company culture? Yeah, so uh, we're obviously hiring. We're hiring both on the go-to-market side or we're hiring on the product and engineering side. If you want to build well, a new cloud platform, I won't say the word super cloud again, but uh, if, you want to, if you're excited about building a cloud platform, that literally sits on top of you know, the other cloud platforms and offers services on top of this, come talk to us, we're building something amazing. You're creating a super cloud toolkit. <laughs> I'll say it. <laughs> on that you know? note, I think John Furrier <laughs> has now managed to get seven uses of the word super cloud into this broadcast. <laughs> Bassam Tamara, thank you so much for joining us guys. today. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. I can't wait to see more of you throughout the course of KubeCon. My name is Savannah Peterson, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here on theCUBE, where we'll be live from Detroit, Michigan, all week.